That's why you don't need a personal doctor. If you're Chinese, you don't need a Chinese doctor. If you're Filipino, you don't need a Filipino doctor. An islander, you don't need an islander doctor because our bodies are the same. Our bodies run by principles, or you call them rules. I think I'm echoing too much. Our bodies run by principles, we call them rules. And yet, so many of us, we become driven by emotions, circumstances and situations, driven by how people treat us, or driven by how we perceive others have treated us. And as a result of that, we subject ourselves to the attack of demons. Plants don't have emotions. Trees don't have emotions. Animals don't have emotions. They live. They live by instinct. They live by the laws of creation. It's very important for us to remember that God rules this whole universe by principles. That's why you don't need to pray every morning for the sun to rise up. The sun still rises up whether you feel happy or depressed. Praise God for that. <laughs> Isn't that good? The rain still falls whether you feel good or not. It is important for Christians not to be moved by human emotions. The gifts of the Spirit are not emotions. The fruit of the Spirit, they are not feelings. Feelings come and feelings go. The gifts of the Spirit can come and the gifts of the Spirit can leave. We must live by biblical principles. The Word of God says that He sent His Word and healed them. It does not say He sent the gifts of the Spirit and healed them. You must not live dependent on spiritual gifts. We must live dependent on the Word of God. Can we say Amen? The gifts of the Spirit, they do not benefit the one who is moving in them. The gifts of the Spirit are primarily to save the lost. The body of Christ should live healthy. Healing was not provided for in the Garden of Eden. Why? Because they didn't need it. God did not create Adam and Eve sick. Sickness came as a result of rebellion, as a result of sin against the word. So as a people of God, we should believe and we are living in health and healing all the time. And you shall have whatsoever you say you believe. The devil tries to put sickness in your mouth because once you say it, it has gone through your mind. It will go into your soul. And your soul is so powerful that it can undermine your spirit and your body. So many Christians have lived by feelings and the teachings of the world instead of by the truth the Word of God. When I first got saved, I rejoiced that I don't have to be sick anymore. Before I got saved, my mother, my mother-in-law always told me, don't eat this, don't eat that, don't eat this, don't eat that, eat this, don't eat that, eat this, don't eat that. <laughs> and when I got saved, I praised the Lord because I could eat anything and everything. <laughs> Freedom. Freedom. Jesus said that he had created your excretion on the inside of you so that whatever is toxic, whatever is not good for you, should be passed out of your body. And we need to pray that whatever is not good for us physically, 
emotionally, mentally, volitionally, spiritually should be passed out from us. Can we say amen? Don't retain what is bad, what is toxic for you. The devil is very real. He's seeking for whom he may devour. That means he can't devour everyone. Especially when those of us, we are walking in the truth, living by the Spirit. Amen. We're praying and declaring what's in heaven, what's in the Father's heart. Your voice becomes a sound from heaven. Your voice does not support the works of the devil. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. These are the fundamental principles that we must live by. The fundamental principles that we must live by. Remember that once you've been born again, you have a seed. You become a seed. You are a seed of God. Everywhere you go, you're sowing seeds. And what's needed for the plant is in the seed. A seed is sufficient in and of itself to grow roots and start to blossom, to sprout, to become a beautiful tree. So that's why it's so important for us to be aware of our sufficiency in Christ Jesus. If God cannot heal you, who can? Come on, ask yourself these questions. If God cannot comfort you, come on, who can? If God cannot provide you, who can? And then you'll be settled. And then you won't be blown about by every wind of doctrine, whatever the doctors say, whatever the world says, whatever the social media says. Because if you're always changing, the book of James tells us that don't even think that you will receive anything from the Lord. God does not change, and he wants us to be like him, immovable. Jesus is immovable. The word is immovable, and he had come from heaven to earth so that we can have him in us. The Holy Spirit is the Christ in you, the Christ in you, the hope of glory. When you hear the word of God, don't just hear it and then go home and live as if you have not heard it. A sermon is no good to you, not until you live it out. Listen to the sermon again and again. That's how it gets into your spirit. I listen to it for it to get into my spirit, get into my spirit, get into my spirit, and then it will bubble up out of my spirit, into my soul, controlling my will, controlling my emotions, controlling my mind, giving the devil no foothold. Yes, sometimes I fall, but though I fall, I shall arise. Amen. That's the body of Christ that we belong to. Excellent individuals are powerful people. We are all excellent individuals because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of excellence in you. So don't look down on yourself. Don't allow the devil to bully you. Don't allow the devil to undermine you. Come on, say with me, I am an excellent individual. And together, we are a powerful people. I believe in confession because your voice is very important. How many of us have been hurt by voices? How many of us have been depressed by hearing somebody's voice? Your voice is very powerful. Use it for good. Don't allow the devil to turn it against you. Your voice is a sword. You turn it against the devil. Can we say amen? And when you're listening to the word of God, expect to receive from God. Just like Cornelius and his household. 
When Peter was speaking, the Holy Spirit fell on them. The gifts, the blessings of God fell on them. So when you're in this environment, in this atmosphere, believe the Holy Spirit to fall on you. I can't function without the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit to fall on me all the time. I didn't have this sermon until 6 o'clock last evening. I expect. I expected the Holy Spirit to speak through me. I expected the Holy Ghost to speak through me. And I told my soul to stop being anxious, to stop panicking in Jesus' name. Can we say amen? Because you're not here to listen to me. You're here to listen to what God is saying to you through me. Amen. And if you call me Pastor Dora, can I ask you to believe that I'm your pastor? Don't call me your pastor if you don't believe that. If you don't accept the pastoral role that God had put me in your life. A pastor is somebody who prays for you, who cares about you, who watches over your soul. Watches over your soul. It's somebody who dares to correct you with the truth. Can we say amen? Excellent individuals are powerful people. I don't usually talk like that. It's the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. He's given me the bonus to say so. Now go with me to Leviticus chapter 26 verse 8. Leviticus 26 verse 8. I've had people that received my counsel and were blessed. Amen. I've also had people who refused my counsel and uh, they lost their blessings. I'm responsible for the condition of your soul and I stand before God and I'm accountable towards God for you as my people, as my sheep. I'm the Lord's under shepherd. Can we say amen? Amen. And how many of us believe in divine connections? Amen. It's not by luck. It's not by coincidence. It's by God's appointment and arrangement. Amen. If you look at Leviticus chapter 26, verse 8, let's get into the, the word. Excellent individuals are powerful people. And five of you, come on, say five. five. Shall chase a hundred. Come on, say with me a hundred. A hundred of you shall put ten thousand. Say with me ten thousand. Now go with me to Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 30. Deuteronomy 32, verse 30. How should one, say with me one, chase a thousand, say with me a thousand, and put ten thousand, say with me ten thousand, to flight. One, a thousand. Two, put ten thousand to flight. What's the difference between Deuteronomy and Leviticus? In Leviticus, God was with his army, with his people. And therefore, there's an overwhelming victory. In Deuteronomy, his people had betrayed him. And that's why God had to use an enemy to wake up his people back to righteousness. So he was with the enemy. But in both cases, you have God with an army. And so the results are the same. An overwhelming victory. One is for the Israelites, one is for the enemy of the Israelites. So what's the key to having success in your life? Be on God's side. Say to the person next to you, make sure you are on God's side. Amen. <laughs> well, let's look at how God sees warfare or battles or challenges. Five can beat up to 100 demons. 100 can beat up to 10,000 devils. One defeats 1,000 to 10,000. Wow. If you look at Deuteronomy again, 32:30, 30, Deuteronomy 32:30. 30. One, one chase a thousand. One chase a thousand. So we're not talking about a weak individual. We're not talking about a weak person. Well, you say, well, I don't always have to chase a thousand. 
What about the cancer cells that try to multiply in your body? Don't you have to chase them? Don't you have to kill them? What about the demons of infirmity that try to sit on your bones? Don't you have to chase them? Don't you have to defeat them? What about the devils in the atmosphere that keeps telling you how bad this person is, how bad that person is? Don't you have to chase them away from your mind? Yes. One can chase a thousand. So we're not talking about a weak individual. We're talking about a victorious and a powerful one. An excellent individual. But then as you continue to read, two, two put 10,000. So God puts, God blesses people working together. One is good, but two is better. Two of the same victorious kingdom spirit chases away 10,000 devils. Victory grows by 100 times. If you go to Leviticus 26 verse 8, we read that just now. 5 to 100, 100 to 10,000. That's an increase of 100 times. Better than just 20 times. Well, you ask this question, then is God just after number? No. He's after a people of the same kingdom spirit. The song that we sang just now, unity in the spirit. Our unity is in the spirit, is in the kingdom spirit. Amos chapter 3 verse 3. Go to Amos chapter 3 verse 3. How can two walk together unless they are agreed? Now, notice that this is passive voice. They are agreed. It's not unless they agreed. They are agreed. Agreed by what? The Word of God. Unless they came to an agreement by the Spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit, the Kingdom Spirit, then we walk together in unity and in victory, in success. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. The Word is the unbeatable uniting power of God. We are a people of the same Spirit. It's the Spirit of truth. It's the unity of the Kingdom Spirit. And for the kingdom, you lay yourself down. For the kingdom, you lay yourself down. Jesus came for the kingdom and he put himself down for us. Can we say amen? Amen. The Holy Spirit will never divide us. He always unites us because we are the army of God. How many of you know that the world is in a war right now? A war against the souls of men. Can I invite you to not just look at yourself, but look at the people around you? Can I invite you to think of how Jesus sacrificed himself for us? Without his sacrifice, you and I would never be here. And can I ask you as his disciple to do the same? Can we say amen? Put our selfish agenda aside. Today is Sunday. I'm coming to church to serve. Today is Sunday. I'm coming to church early. Today is Sunday. I'm coming to church to pray early in the morning. You can never outgive God. What you have sacrificed to give to Him, He will always multiply and return to you. Can we say Amen. A divided army can never win a battle. A divided household will fall. When our nation falls, if Australia goes to war, 
we all will go to war. When our nation falls, we all fall with it. If there's a storm that comes to attack this building, we'll all fall with it. It's very important for us to understand when a family is split up, then all those that are in the family will go down. When a marriage is broken, the whole family suffers. When the church is divided, the devils rejoice. Look at Mark chapter 3, verse 24 to 25. Mark chapter 3, verse 24 to 25. Our biggest enemy, our greatest enemy is individualism and selfishness. Individualism and selfishness. If a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. This is a principle. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. Now, I want you to look at that scripture with the help of the Holy Spirit. I want you to notice kingdom two times, house two times. They are group entities, group entities, collective entities. Entities, kingdom, house, not individuals, collectives, collectives. As a child of God, you have a kingdom that you live in. You have a spiritual family. You must have a home church. Don't be butterfly Christians that fly from church to church because you will never settle and your faithfulness will be undermined. The Word of God says a faithful man abounds in blessings. Amen. So you have a kingdom, you have a spiritual family, you have a church, your home church, which you belong to, which blesses you, which you serve. How many of us have allowed self-interest, self-opinions to destroy the common and the greater good. How many of us have done that before? Yes. We need to understand that the whole spiritual realm, including gods and the devils, runs by principles. As I said, you don't need to pray for the sun to rise up every morning. You don't need to pray for the sun to set every night. The whole universe runs by principles. You don't have to pray for your heart to move, your lungs to breathe. Your whole body operates by principles. Your body does not wake up in the morning and say, well, I'm happy today, so you have a healthy day. Or I'm depressed today, so your heart is going to play up, your lungs are going to play up. (laughs) Thank God for that. Can we say amen? Human feelings and opinions can destroy us if we allow them. Definitely they can destroy your Christian walk and get you into sickness and disease, even catastrophes and disasters. They are very self-righteous. We're talking about every one of us, okay? We're talking about our human feelings are very self-righteous, very self-centered, easily manipulated. They are transient unreliable and deceptive. How many of you have discovered that you can be so sad, so mad, and then after an hour you become so joyful, (laughs) you become so cheerful? How many of us have experienced that? Yes. I've had times, you know, I only have one husband, so I need to use him as my example. So, (laughs) you know, sometimes Sunny make me so mad and so angry, you know, so sad. And then after I've talked with him, after he had explained it, and after sometimes, you know, he apologized, I became so, so happy, so glad, so joyful. And I said, thank you, Lord, for Sunny. Thank you, Lord, for my husband. He's such a good husband. Thank you, Jesus. All within one day. (laughs) Is it just me? I don't know. I don't think so. (laughs) Look at 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. 
especially when you go to God. How many of you know that Christianity is all about positive changes? Come on, lift up your hands. Say with me, positive changes. Come on, positive changes. One more time, positive changes. Christianity is all about positive changes. And we want that all the time. Including our body, including our character, our personality, our finances. <laughs> our relationships with people. Come on, lift up your hands. Positive changes. Amen. Jesus changed us from a sinner to a saint. Isn't that a positive change? Amen. And what else? Not only did Jesus forgive us of all of our sins, what else? He took away the consequences of sin from us. He bore our sicknesses and carried our pain. Sickness is the consequence of sin. And he delivered us from accidents, catastrophes. Delivered us from the devil's luck or bad luck. And he put us into his kingdom of principles that never changes. His mercy is new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Do you want to be like God, faithful? Or to be like people that change all the time? Lift up your hands if you want to be like God. Amen. Don't treat people according to what they deserve, according to what you think they deserve. Judgment belongs to God. We are not God. So stop judging people. Can we say amen? If you look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a peculiar people. Can you notice all the collective nouns? Collective nouns? Generation. Priesthood. Nation, people, a powerful people. They are all collective nouns. I am one of many. Come on, say to yourself, I am one of many. So don't neglect and don't ignore the many. We are members of the whole of humanity. That's why Jesus needs us to love people. How many of you know that there's a scripture in the Bible that says one sinner can do a lot of bad? How many of you know that when your body plays up, it doesn't have to be every part of your body plays up. It can be just your kidney or just the liver. Even if one part of our body plays up and goes down, it destroys the whole thing. You are very important. You are very, very important to the collective that God has put you in. Can we say amen? Amen. You are a piece of puzzle in the big picture. Oh, we forgot to show that video. Watch it, you know, when you go home. The puzzle can never be complete without you. How many of you do puzzles? How many of you are like, I'm, I just need that piece to fill, you know, just that piece to put it in? We are all a piece in the big puzzle of humanity, in the big puzzle of the church. You are very, very important to the big puzzle, and the big puzzle is very, very important to you. You can never survive. You can never fulfill your calling without the big puzzle. We all need to go to Kmart from time to time, right? Coles or Woolworth from time to time. We all function within humanity. Isn't that true? Come on, tell me if it's true. Yes. Yes, it's true. Every one of us, we have a double portion. 
a double portion, one for yourself, one for others. One for yourself, one for others. Come on, say to the person next to you, I have a double portion. One for you, one for me. <laughs> one more time, I have a double portion, one for you, one for me. Praise the Lord, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. We need both to draw from and to give. We need both. Look at John chapter 12, verse 24. John 12, 24. I'm only teaching what I've learned. I'm teaching what I've gone through. I'm teaching what I've gone through, what I've learned, and what have benefited me. It's true. Don't just take your personality as it is. Personality can be changed. Character can be changed. Can we say amen? Your soul must be changed. It's called transformation. Depression can kill you. Criticism and judgmentalism can ruin your life. Don't gravitate to the law of gravity. We must live by the law of lift. Can we say amen? How many of you know that when the plane is taking off, when the plane is taking off, it must take off? And if it's in the middle of taking off, and it cannot take off, and it's pulled down by the law of gravity, everyone within the plane will have an accident, or would I? Christians, we are taking off. We are taking off. We're taking off. We're going to heaven. We're taking off. You must see yourself taking off. You must see yourself going higher and higher. Can we say amen? Come on, lift up your hands with me. I'm going higher. I'm going higher. Every day. I believe in positive changes. Amen. Glory be to God. John 12, 24. Jesus said, verily, verily. So he's like your doctor telling you, listen to me. This is very important. This is a matter of life and death. I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die. It abides alone. If you live by yourself, for yourself, you will die. Unless a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. You'll be limited to who you are. You'll be living a human life with all of its difficulties and challenges and sicknesses and accidents. You must live above the human realm, above the natural realm, in order to have the spirit of excellence. Can we say amen? Amen. Amen. In fact, it is so powerful, it is so powerful, the Catholic Church says, well, that's only reserved for the selected few. If you want to live an excellent life, a heavenly life, you must take the vow of poverty, the vow of, uh, what's that called? Another vow? Ce celibacy, celibacy. And then uh, you'll be a monk or you'll be a nun. Because this life is too high, too sacred, too holy for everyone else. That's the devil talking to you. Jesus did not die for the celebrities. Jesus did not die for a selected few. That's why, you know, some churches, they have this kind of teaching only in Bible college. Because it's too much for the ordinary average Christian. If you want it, then come to Bible college. Jesus taught this to everyone. The disciples came from the, the crowd, from everyone. Can we say amen? The apostle Paul, he said, it's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. This is the excellent life. You know how I got my driver's license? Because I said, it's no longer I driving for the test, for the examiner. It's the Holy Spirit quickening me. And that's how I got my driver's license. Amen. You always die and live Jesus higher, 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 higher. Live Jesus higher, 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 higher. Live Jesus higher. Praise the Lord. I was in Launceston. I was holding Ollie in my arms. <laughs> I was singing this with him. Higher, higher. Live Jesus higher. Amen. That's what we want for everyone. Come on, say to the person next to you, go higher. Go higher. Hallelujah.
Amen. Hallelujah. Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it dies, but if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. Die to self and be resurrected in Christ Jesus. Live the resurrected life. Can we say amen? Your calling, my calling, is greater than our individuality. and can only be found in our corporate identity. There are prayers that will never come to you if you just pray by yourself. There are blessings that will never come to you if you just live for yourself. Why? Because God loves those who love his kingdom, his family, his church, his people. Let me ask you, those who are parents, would you love somebody who loved your children? Come on, lift up your hands if you do. Would you love somebody who loves your husband? Yes. You love somebody who loves your family? Yes. You love somebody who even loves your dog? Yes. There's something special about being a family, isn't that right? God loves those who loves his family. Remember that. Amen. Hallelujah. Your calling is bigger than you. Your calling expands you and reaches you and lifts you up to the high place where you can bless others. What's the high place for? The high place is to bless others, to shine your light on those who are lost. How many of us want to live from the high place? Come on, lift up your hands. Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, how many of us know that in the beginning, God created just one person, one man, and his name is Adam. God created Adam. But did he stop? No. What did he do? He created Eve out of Adam. The same kind. The same, the same kind. The same kind. Right? So he created Eve out of Adam. He breathed into Eve, right? And the two became one flesh. And out of that couple, what happened? Procreation happened. Procreation started. Procreation started. So God's heart is procreation. God wants us to multiply ourselves. Multiply your kingdom spirit into different people. Amen. What about Abraham? God called Abraham out of his family, out of his land, right? God called Abraham alone by himself. And yet, did God stop? No. God put in Abraham, in Abraham and Sarah, Abraham and Sarah, such a strong desire to have a child. And did God give them the desire of their heart? Yes. And what happened? And then they started to multiply. From 1 to 12, from 12 to a tribe, from tribes to nations. Can we say amen? You and I, we are not created to be loners. Let me ask you, what about God? Is God just one person? No, God is three in one. Three in one. Three in one. So God has not called us to be loners, but to be a people. If you feel that you can't get along with people, if you feel that you are lonely, you're hearing the devil. Can I be honest? If you feel that you always have to withdraw from others, if others are annoying you all the time, you have developed like what's that called? Um, the fear of people, the fear of men. You just want to stay away from them. I suffered from that when I was in uni. I was in St. John's College in Hong Kong University and they had the high table once a month. Every one of us should join. I would quickly join and then I would quickly go back to my room because I was feeling so bad about myself. I had this great inferiority complex. And at the same time, I was so competitive. I was always comparing myself with others that I couldn't stand myself and I couldn't stand others. That's the devil trying to destroy me. 
That kind of voice is not from God, it's from the devil. It's the voice of the devil. God had never created us to be lonely. Amen. After I got born again, God has created me, you know, I realized that God had created me to be a people person. You know, I can be working hard, I can be very busy, but the minute I receive your phone call, I got energized. How many have called me, you know, and then you said, Pastor Dora, are you busy? Can I talk to you? And then I'll talk to you for an hour. <laughs> you can energize me. People energize us one another. We energize one another. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know what is the world's number one killer? What is the world's number one killer? It's not COVID. COVID came and went. Loneliness. Loneliness is the world's number one killer. It's the devil's voice. God has never created us to be lonely. He had, he had, he had given you the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. To be spiritual does not mean that you are just by yourself. You can't stand people. That is not spirituality. Can we say amen? If you can't stand people, you are not spiritual. You're carnal. Can we say amen? God loves people. Come on, say it with me. God loves people. And you are one of them. Amen? Hallelujah. We are one of them. Praise the Lord. Withdrawal is not healthy. Don't allow the devil to take you away from people, to take away from you God's love for people. Withdrawal is not healthy. It is sad, it is depressing, and it's demonic. Come on, say to the person next to you, expand your horizons. One more time, expand your horizons. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Why are you always sitting next to your wife, next to your husband? Why can't you mix with others when you come to church? You come two by two, the animals going into the Noah's Ark, and you leave two by two. You've never mixed with anybody else. I've observed, I've noticed. And then you raise your hand, I want positive changes. <laughs> God can't change us if we don't change ourselves. We pray so loud, hard for people, hard for people, and yet we don't even mix with one another. Say to the person next to you, I'm going to leave you and mix with others. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I mean it. Come on. Turn to one another and say, I'm going to leave you and mix with others. We were in Korea, and there's a, a kind of dish that's so beautiful. You know, uh, I don't know what is it called. It's a bowl of rice. Maybe you can teach me. A bowl of rice, and they give you a bowl of plain rice and then a bowl of salad. Maybe a bowl with uh, salad and beef. And what you do is that you mix the beef and the salad with the rice. After you've mixed it, it becomes so yummy. But if you don't mix it, it's not yummy. <laughs> so say to the person in front of you, behind you, mix. Come on, say to the person behind you, in front of you, mix. Amen, mix. Praise God. <laughs> How many of you want your double portion to grow? <laughs> More anointing? <laughs> Say to yourself, mix. <laughs> mix. I know everyone loves Pastor Dora, but I can't mix with everyone in church. <laughs> you need to mix among yourselves. <laughs> Amen. Mix among ourselves. Can we say amen? Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're not created to be loners. So let's get along with one another. Let's mix with one another. If we could drop that spirit, what is that spirit? Critical, judgmental, victimized, and competitive spirit. If we could drop that, then we can easily mix with anyone. A seed is a seed. It doesn't have to compete with anyone else. If it's an apple seed, it will bear apples. Okay? You are a child of God. You are a seed and you have all the goodies within you. You don't have to get it from someone else. You don't have to try to wrench it out of anybody else. You don't get anything by competitive jealousy. You don't get anything by criticizing, judging anybody. 
It will only do harm to you. Love is good for our body. I remember uh, Dr. Liu, she preached a sermon. She said, laughter is good for you. You know, you buy a lot of expensive, what do you call it? Antioxidants. Is that the right word? Antioxidants. Antioxidants. You get a lot of antioxidants just be nice, by being nice to people. Amen. Do you believe me? If you, if you believe me, say amen. Amen. When you love someone else, your whole body gets rejuvenated. Love is the greatest supplement. Love is the greatest supplement. Love will rejuvenate you. Love will renew you. Love will heal you. Can we say amen? Because who is love? Well, you say to me, how can I love him? My husband is so bad to me. How can I love her? My wife is so bad to me. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Wasn't he, love, wasn't, he, wasn't he good to you when you were bad? Didn't he love you when you were a sinner? Yes. You want others to love you? Then love someone else. Do to others what you want them to do to you. Can we say amen? Amen. You can do it because the power of God is within you. Come on, say to yourself, I can do all things. Through Christ, which strengthens me. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Same as loneliness is a killer, individualism is a killer. Why? Because we'll never be fulfilled until we find our corporate identity. Our individuality is in the big picture of humanity. We have a sense of belonging. Everyone needs to belong. You have a craving for belonging, a craving for purpose, a craving for significance. Why? Everyone needs to belong and everyone needs to serve. How come we are rubbing each other the wrong way? Because we need to be sanctified. So every time when your husband upsets you, frustrates you, tell yourself, I need to be sanctified. <laughs> I need to overcome my negative emotions, my negative reactions. I need to overcome all my selfish excuses. You all look so happy. <laughs> when somebody annoys you, Come on, tell yourself. Lift up your hands together with me. Say, I need to be sanctified. <laughs> One more time. I need to be sanctified. Get all the toxic elements out of me. The devil has no foothold in my life. No foothold in my brain. No foothold in my emotions. No ugly emotions. No toxic emotions in Jesus' name. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I'm not subject to how people treat me. Listen to Kingdom Warriors, the last uh, Thursday. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you know that God hates seven things? God hates seven things. Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16. Okay, look at six things the Lord hates. They're bad enough. Seven are abomination to him. What's the seventh? The seventh is he that sows discord among the brethren. This unity. This unity is what God hates. Sowing gossips, sowing disunity is what God hates within his body. Unity is where God commands his blessings. Discord is where God turns his back on us. So when we move in unity, we attract God's blessings. How many of you want your family to be blessed? Come on, lift up your hands. Move in the unity of the kingdom spirit. The unity of the kingdom spirit. How many of us want our church to be blessed? Lift up your hands. Move in the unity of the kingdom spirit. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. A few basic questions. What is the purpose of getting married? Why does God bless marriage? Ask yourself. 
Does God just bless all marriages? Yes, He does. Why? How come my marriage is not working out? How come my marriage is such a pain to me? Well, go back to the roots. We all watch a lot of Hollywood movies, YouTube movies, <laughs> drama, romantic drama. Oh, I found the guy. I found my prince charming. I found my Cinderella, this beautiful princess. I get to marry whom I want. He or she is my dream come true. Then a year later, you find that you've married the wrong person. You've married a nightmare. <laughs> Come on. Why? Because to begin with, you married for a selfish reason. We have a lot of princesses, you know, princesses in our midst. And princesses are always going after Prince Charming. You know, my beautiful prince is coming for me. He'll do whatever I say. He listens to me. He comforts me. He'll go all the way for me. That's Jesus. <laughs> and another prince said, Oh, I found my Cinderella. I found my beautiful woman. Oh, she's going to take care of me. She'll cook for me. She'll wash my clothes, even my underwear. She'll keep my house tidy. <laughs> She'll love me even when I, when I was drooling when I was asleep. Even when I was snoring when I was asleep. <laughs> and then you end up fighting each other. Hurting one another, complaining against one another. Why? We became disillusioned because we started with an illusion. An illusion will always get you disillusioned. So what are you saying, Pastor Dora? Should I divorce? I would gladly do so. No. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying your life can change by the Word of God. You can change your life, your marriage, by the Word of God. If you're desperate enough for it, it will change your life for you. It had changed my life. The Word of God can change anything, everything in our life. There is no such thing called a perfect marriage. No. There's no such thing called a perfect marriage. But if you would work for it, if you would work for it, it will work for you. Come on, say to the person next to you, if you will work for it, it will work for you. Amen. If you will work for it, it will work for you. What about children? What's the purpose of giving birth to children, of having a family? To have heirs so that, you know, have somebody to continue my family line, to continue my family name. One thing about family is that we have to watch ourselves, that we don't get so caught up that we feed on one another. You know, we feed on one another to the extent that we, we frustrate one another, we can't live without one another. A codependent relationship is very toxic. Children can move without the parents, and parents can move without the children. Parents become very controlling, very manipulative. I'm only happy if my children love me. I'm not happy if my children don't love me. I'm only happy if my husband is good to me. I'm sad when my husband is not good to me. I'm only happy when my wife is good to me. I'm sad when my wife is not good to me. And then we feed on one another emotionally. It's very toxic. Every one of us is born free. Born free. Every one of us was born free. I gave birth to my children, but it does not mean that they are mine. They are God's. I'm a steward 
of the grace of God to raise them up for God. We need to renounce that toxic emotion of possessiveness. Being possessive is very, very destructive. Being possessive, being territorial is very, very demonic. Because we own nothing, not even ourselves. We are stewards. Can we say amen? So parents let go of your children. Children let go of your parents. Don't feed on one another. How old are you? 50, 60, you're still being controlled by your parents? How old are you? 60, 50, your children still upset you? Come on. Say to the person next to you, mature, grow up. Excellent individuals, a powerful people. Can we say amen? A healthy family is made up of loving, respectful, come on, say with me, respectful. Respectful, non-manipulative, and non-controlling relationships. How many of you know that the Chinese culture is ancestral worship? Ancestral worship is even more popular than Buddhism. What's ancestral worship? You worship your ancestors because you owe your life to them. No, I don't owe my life to my parents. I don't know even who they are. You owe your life to God. Life comes from God. You don't worship your parents. You don't worship your ancestors. Whom the sun says free is free indeed. And you don't worship your children. You know, the plagues in Egypt, what happened? Their firstborn was killed. Toxic relationships are very, very harmful. We must give one another the freedom to live. Come on, say to one another, I give you the freedom to be yourself. The freedom to be yourself. I must give my children the freedom to be themselves. And they give me the freedom to be myself. Husband and wife, we must give one another the freedom. Amen. Can we say amen? Thank you, Jesus. Because you destroy and hurt one another. If you try like this little one. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. Relationships are for us to draw the good out of one another. For us to build godliness into one another. When I'm upset with you, I don't try to correct you. I don't try to hurt you. I don't try to smash you. I don't try to scold, to scold you. I examine myself. Because what happened to Moses? It was legal. I mean, completely understandable for Moses to be upset with the people, right? We need to understand that God understands us and he can sit right next to us and listen to us vent and cry. He can be very, very sympathetic, but nothing is going to change until we change. So I need to examine myself. Why am I so vulnerable? Why am I so sad? I was in the middle of a, a struggle one time. I got so upset. You know, I got so sad. I got so upset. And I ran out of the place. And uh, I was crying. I was so, so upset. And then the devil spoke to me in my head. And the devil said, look at you. You are a preacher. You preached the word. You read the word. Look at you. You failed. You failed. Look at you. What's the point of praying? What's the point of praying? What's the point of teaching? What's the point of preaching? And, uh, you know, I said, yeah, he's right. <laughs> he's right. And the Holy Ghost rose up from within me with the word, though I fall, I shall arise. Amen. Don't allow the devil to beat you up. Beat him up. Amen. Come on, tell yourself, don't allow the devil to beat me up. Beat him up instead. Be careful with all those thoughts that happen in your head. The devils can talk to your head. Banish him. Drive him out. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. There's a hero that is a hero on each, on the inside of each and every one of us. There's a hero in you. And that hero rises up when anybody needs help. There's a hero in you. There's a desire in you to bless people. There's a desire in you to help people. The good Samaritan spirit is within you. That's why we need one another. We find it easier to help the weak. We find it easier to help those who are falling. But we find it hard and we get into envy. We get into jealousy. There's a hero within you. Don't allow the devil to get that heroic spirit out of you. Keep that heroic spirit. There is a maternal, paternal side to you. There is a brotherhood, a sisterhood nature in every one of us. There is the desire to provide for, to teach, to protect, and to rise up for everyone who needs help. Can we say amen? The sense of belonging, the sense of loyalty has been given to us by God. Everyone needs to belong to a loving, nurturing, upbuilding, and uplifting community. And the one to keep your community uplifting, upbuilding is you. The minute you, you don't do anything and just let somebody else do it, you're in the wrong place. A very powerful thing is the spirit, is the atmosphere. Amen. When you move in this positive at atmosphere, when you move in this at positive atmosphere, everything around you comes alive. When you move in the atmosphere of servanthood, when you move in the atmosphere of wanting the best to happen to the people around you, everything within you comes alive, thrive. What is patriotism? Patriotism is wanting the good for your country. A country prospers when every one of its citizens is doing well. Excellent individuals will give us a powerful people and you will be blessed just because you belong to the powerful people amen hallelujah this principle of excellent individuals a powerful people works in the natural in the big corporates in the companies in the nations how much more in the church in the kingdom of god in the household of god so can I ask you, can I invite you to think, to talk, and feel good about the people around you? Because everyone is made in the image of God. Nobody is perfect in the natural, including yourself. So relax and enjoy one another's company. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can I ask you to stand with me? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can the musicians come? Hallelujah. We all need to be sanctified. Jesus said men do not live by bread alone. So how many times a day do we eat? Breakfast, lunch, or dinner? <laughs> Three, six, seven? <laughs> we need to feed on the word. Okay, so it's not that Pastor Dora gets upset if I don't come to church. Church is where you get fed. Church is where the anointing falls on you. Church is where devils are driven out of you. And you keep that. And you stay that way. Amen. How many of you have ever bought a new piece of clothing? And what do you have to do? Can you just wearing it? Just keep wearing it without washing it? No, what do you have to do? Wash it. Iron it, hang it up, keep it. That's what we need to do. You can't just wash yourself once a year. Amen, amen, hallelujah, amen. Even your physical body needs to be maintained, upkeep, upkept, and how much more our soul, our spirit, our body. Can we say amen? Amen, we need that, we need that. Maintenance, it's easy to buy a new house but you need to maintain it. Amen? Amen. Let's sing the song. Uh, what's the song we 